Well, we are live here, and we are setting up for epoxy addiction with Brandon. Brandon, we're we're setting up here, right? So what does what does uh, setup entail? So basically, you're going to have uh, some cups laid out to have whatever piece you're going to be working mm -hmm. on. The options are we have large canvas, and we also have shadow boxes uh, that people can choose from. Or Ron has brought in his own custom piece today that he's going to do. So basically, you get eight ounces of epoxy to work with, and um, you know mix, and you can do whatever you want with that. There's there's a whole ton of mica pigments on that shelf over there. Uh, we got chameleon pigments, chameleon flakes, glitter, sparkles, all kinds of stuff here. Uh, people basically just get to choose what they want to use. So this is like a legit class. Like you're not coming in, everybody's doing the same thing. You're coming in and exercising, everybody's doing something different. And if you guys were with us last time, this guy here, Ron George. Ron George, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Give it up. 21 days of horror. 21 days of horror. And, uh, and that is launching April 1st, but it's, it's, people are signing up for that now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were with us last time... The competition you, starts April 1st. competition starts April 1st, but there's an opportunity to sign up now. Yeah. And uh, if you shared that, that interview a couple weeks ago, your name is in this hat. And in addition to getting the... Yeah. Magnet... <laughs> The keychain, the magnet. You're also getting an entry yep. worth 125 bucks. Yep. And I, I noticed that there was a lot of um, filmmakers and I think folks that have other skills like some effects and actors who also shared it. So it might go to it can go to somebody with a bunch of different talents. But uh, Brandon, because this is. Your interview. Woo. We're gonna talk about that. Why don't you go you ahead and pick the, the yeah, the winner, the winner of the uh, Twenty One Days of Horror. Not looking. And drum roll, please. The winner is Stephanie Wells. Stephanie Wells. Well, Woo. thank you for uh, for sharing, and uh, we'll get that uh, that information out to you and get that entry over to you. But in the meantime, we're going to just kind of hang over your shoulder for a bit. We're going to ask some questions. and I'm sure a lot of these people have questions as well, too. We're just getting into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right now, everybody's kind of putting on their gloves, picking out their pieces, what they're going to be working on. How's everybody feeling right now? What are we, what are we doing? Where are we at? I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. I love it. That's exactly where we need to be. Oh, yeah. So you got your colors picked out, right? We are over there. You got colors. All right. How are you guys doing? You can watch and then kind of just go do on your own. You know? So yeah, okay. the cool thing about Ron George here, he has literally been to every single class. Uh, he's probably a better teacher than I at this point in time. So if you ever want to take epoxy classes, this is the next guy to go to. Just saying, just throwing it out there. You want a canvas like they got? And Ryan, you just keep building, building upon each class, doing something a little bit. Uh, what are we doing? What are you doing today? Because this. This is. Uh, on the frame. Yeah. The frame. I'm gonna lay it in there and. I'll take your canvas. Okay. There we go. This guy. You see some other stuff. So yeah, you're going. Yeah, I'm going dark. You, you, you and, and you, you got plans for this. Is this yeah. uh, maybe a, a, a film? Uh, maybe a piece for um, a film that oh. has to do with that. That's got it. Got it. All right. Well, in case you guys don't know, Ron does a lot of film work, and uh, he's amazing. Yeah. He's very modest. Look at him, just setting up his camera. What, and, and, let me ask you this: Like, why are you doing this? Why are you teaching this class? Uh, I'm addicted to it. You know, uh, that's the personality type that I have. You know, I, I come from a background of substance abuse, uh, alcohol, drugs, you name it, everything uh, out there. And um, 
you know, I kind of hit a point where I just hit rock bottom, you know, and posed the question to the universe, like, what am I supposed to do with my life, you know, and that answer kind of took a couple of years of being inscribed to figure out, uh, but the first time that I poured epoxy, I was hooked. I, I wanted to make an epoxy table uh, after my aunt, um, her son had passed away. And you know, I just wanted to work on a project with my dad, and I was like, yeah, I want to box the table, but I didn't want to pay somebody to do that. So I watched every YouTube video out there that you know there possibly was, uh, learned the do's and don'ts, and even though like you spend all this time doing it, I, I didn't have anybody to really show me how to do it. And that, that was like disheartening a little bit, but like you push through. You know, you spend hundreds, thousands of dollars uh, learning a craft, and you just try to like do every practical thing you can. To build on that, and that's it became an addiction, like an obsession, like literally like starting off selling little pieces or giving away coasters to friends and stuff like that. Like I, I was just accumulating so much stuff, but I couldn't stop. So eventually, started parlaying into, all right, I'm gonna sell some of my stuff. Okay, and the next step is let's teach some classes. And like honestly, I get a lot out of these classes, like ideas and concepts, and like that perception. Yeah, you yeah. Know, just watching people create things and like. The joy it brings up. I mean, you know, like we have a really good time here. We have fun and make little goofy videos to be seen uh, online, and that's that's awesome. Um, so self-taught, and now you're teaching. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the, that's the right thing to do. Right? Yeah, yeah. Getting back to what you learn and stuff like that. And, yeah. Uh, and it's just constantly evolving and changing. There's more ideas and more concepts, and there's so many variations of epoxy. It's not just tabletop. There's deep core. There's UV. I just found out the other day, Billy Butcher was like, hey man, they got clay epoxy. I'm like, what? In the shopping cart, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a form of meditation, you know, like no matter how your day is going, no matter what's going on in your world, you have 15 to 20 minutes that you have to like be hyper-focused on something or else it's gonna go wrong. Like you're gonna miss that opportunity of something yeah. that you invest in, in that art form. So, and like having that with people, especially like the people that come to these classes, like. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. We have a great time together and like I'm just paying it forward. So well, I'm gonna look over your shoulder here as you teach this class and we're gonna stop and maybe take some questions from the audience and Yeah. And we'll uh just kinda be a little uh yeah, so shadow on a wall, a little uh we'll so listen in and see what happens. Cool. Yeah, if you want, just ask people what color choice they're doing, ideas, those are things that I'd yeah. like to do. I'm gonna go grab some more mixing sticks. And Sounds good. Get started mixing. Uh, I need to mix well, we know these folks. <laughs> we know these folks. Trouble. We interviewed Max. How many years ago was that? Uh, I, th that came across a memory here recently again. It was in the. It was probably in July of 2021. Crazy. It was that long ago. It was that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a big, uh, a big fan of Max's work and. Diane, we, if if you've been to the karaoke, right? And then uh, and then Diane was, has been there too. So, do you guys have any plans? Or are you going to kind of just go with the flow? Well, I've taken this uh, class with Brandon several times, and this has been wonderful. So she's she's a newbie. I'm a rookie. I usually don't have a plan, but I do get inspired by autumn. So I do have a little bit of a plan for an image right. that, that Autumn oh. showed earlier. And what's great is Autumn went to one of your classes. She did. Right? She came to Art for Cleveland and her and her mother did four clay classes. All right. She has talented clay, so we'll see her in two dimensions now. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. All right. Hold on, I want to come across here and... I think we just took the glass out. I think that's what we did. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can do that with you. Nice. So take the nice. You have your hand because you're not being shiny. Yeah, I mean, you can't hurry. Reality, you just do it right here. You want to come turn it on the side or you just wipe it off? Because I'm walking around here, guys. Thanks for uh, going. Yeah, let's put everything in here. So you guys ready to start mixing this? Okay. What are you doing here? And you remember the AB. AB, what's, do you know what the, uh, because Brandon said you could just about teach his class. What's the ratio? Four ounces to four ounces. Yeah. Four to four, so one to one. One yeah. to one ratio. Did everybody get that? Yeah. All right, so with the epoxy, you got, you got an A and you got a B, right? So you got your resin and then you got your carbon. So we're going to do a one to one ratio. So if you want, we can do four ounces of A, four ounces of B. 
we're going to take that for your main mixing vessel. Just, you just kind of mix it all in one. While you're mixing, you're going to scrape the sides, hit the bottom, and make sure that we're kind of getting in there. Don't whip it around too much. You're going to introduce a lot of air bubbles, and we want to avoid that. Um, one of the things that we can do and will do is that if we do get air bubbles, we hit it with the heat gun or blowtorch. Uh, you can also use solvent-based stuff, and that sometimes unlocks it. Um, but with, it's a lot easier just to use a heat gun. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So everybody wants to get started pouring. So if she wants two colors, would she do two and two and two and two? So, good question. We're going to do the whole eight ounces at first. So oh, just do four and four. And then we'll pour it, up. pour it individually into little cups. Okay. And then they kind of mix around. Okay. Cool. Cool. And you know what? I'm going to hop in and do one as well. One to one, four ounces to four ounces. Yep. And uh, but you said don't whip it. Yep. Right? So you want to minimize the, the air yeah. trapped inside of it, right? And that's that's one of the problems that like we have as epoxy artists, is, you know, trying to figure out ways to minimize air bubbles. Uh, you can also get a vacuum chamber, and that'll actually pull out all the bubbles prior to mixing. Oh, yeah. So that's a cool little trick you can do. This is part A, part B. Yep. What are those, uh, and and where would you get them? So I tend to like to avoid. I mean. Michael's and Hobby Lobby, they've gotten a little bit better about their epoxy. Right, I've tried a bunch of different kinds. So um, we need to remember this is and originally, so don't be mad at me, I don't mean to bash people, but Alumilite epoxy, I'm not keen on. It's, and you can use it, but it's, it has a little bit have a tendency to get more bubbles and stuff like that. Uh, I like mass epoxy for the countertop usage. Yeah, I think it's really great as far as like you know doing arts and crafts and stuff like that. And that's that. what you're using now, right? Yep. Okay, four, four, four. Mass, if you want. Part A, and then the other one's a part B? Correct. Um, All right. Four. And you'll notice. Yeah, and then you'll make your colors, I, the different colors. To be honest, I don't remember if I was a part A or part B. All right, so now we need part A. Well, play a little game of find out. All right, so we're good on part B. Yeah, it was part, part, a. part B. So you'll notice that when you're pouring your part B, uh, it's got a different viscosity. It's more liquidy and runny. No, no. We're not this out. is part A right now. That's your resin. And I kind of like to do a little tilt back to kind of minimize uh, okay. making a mess. All right. Yeah. Part of, are you ready? You've been stirring for a while here, Ron. How long do you mix that stuff up? Two, three minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes? Two, three minutes is the, uh, the normal amount. It depends on the epoxy. You always want to read, you know, the, the labeling that's on there. Some of them are different. They have different work times, uh, mixing times, stuff like that. Well, we have Heather Hayden watching, Tiffany's watching, and Dave, John. We got a lot of folks watching, so thanks, guys, for joining. If you have any questions, let us know. and. Yeah. We'll put out some references too, you know, maybe some places to uh, to get epoxy, you know, maybe Amazon. That's usually where I get yep. it from. Like I said, I try to avoid the stores. Uh, there's another yep. brand up there, Let's Resin. Remember, that, that's a good one. Which one is that? Yeah, that one right there. So I'll use that for a little bit, like uh, you know, for you know, pouring in silicone molds and stuff like that. It has a better tendency to not have bubbles. Oh, okay. It's got a little bit of a longer cure time, and that's a benefit to having. Uh, a longer cure time is that you're going to have less of a tendency of bubbles to form. So 16 ounces, 32, but you go full out with the uh, the full, what is this, a gallon? Yeah, so it's a two gallon kit. And then these, these ones here are... It's not mixed together yet. It's going to mix it. It's a half gallon kit. It's the A and the B. So, yeah, if anybody has questions, by the way, like this, not only for people in our class, but if you ever have an epoxy question because I get asked all the time, feel free to ask me. I, I rather people ask me a question and hopefully if I don't have an answer for you, I will find one for you. Um, I'm obsessed with this stuff. I love it. It's a great substance to work and play with. And this affords people the opportunity to kind of get that hands-on training that I didn't get originally. Um, so like, you know, people have questions like, hey, can I do this, can I do that? And like, Ron will sometimes do things that I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know how it's gonna look. I don't know how it's gonna work. He ends up pulling it off. And like everybody has a tendency to do that. Like whenever they're experimenting outside the norm. Actually, I'm gonna show you. A piece. you know, mags. About, yeah. Mags, your piece is still here, and we have it in the back. Mm -hmm. So she was the second person I'd ever seen 
actually brushing out epoxy. She made, this way a little bit. she made this kind of like, I don't know, cosmic feather as oh, yeah. what she called it. And she was just painting this out and it just looked really, really cool. It looks great. Yeah. So I'm trying to get different angles here. So, so really, I mean, there are safety rules, obviously, right? Yeah, so with this epoxy, there's not any VOCs. You don't have to worry about, like, inhaling fumes and stuff like that. When I do floors, we, it's a lot of it's solvent-based. So you have to wear a respirator, the full nine. Um, and that's some of the other background. I don't just, just do the arts and crafts stuff. Like, I like doing tables, countertops, floors. Um, it's That's the ultimate right there, just doing a giant floor. Now, Ryan, you mix some... Um pigment some oh yeah you mix that right into your uh your first mm -hmm. what's about four ounces that you mixed there uh, roughly yeah. about half of that yeah so i would put the epoxy in first and then there's the, at the bottom of that barrel okay there's like a whole heaping amount of sand oh yeah <laughs> yeah, and like okay. when you're mixing the sand, you can use. Um, it gives you that cool like, like texture and everything. Oh, yeah. So if it's like one ounce of pox, you probably do like, you know, do two, try two or three of the sand. Okay. Mix in there, just whip it up. And you, you only need a little bit of an ounce. And you kind of clear that base. Does okay. it have a look like so the it's So, yeah, when it starts. We're going to come back in and check it out. So you're, go, you're going this color and then. Uh, you're gonna mix red. another color? So yeah. Okay. Yours is still cloudy. Right. That's what I'm hearing, right? Yeah, just kind of mix around the stars, yeah. hit that bottom. I know they're gonna have a lot of bubbles. It's, it's fine, we're gonna get rid of those bubbles, okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, you made a mess. You want some new clubs? You don't make a mess, you're not trying. <laughs> it's not art. It's, it's not, not messy. art if it's not messy. Come on, it's not messy. So you guys are doing uh, this first time you've touched epoxy? No, not this is my first his time. First time? Okay. Yeah. She does a lot of it in her basement. I, I oh, nice. Oh, nice. I needed to learn how to use the alcohol inks, right? Mine was always like mudging together, so. It depends on the epoxy as well. So if you get like a certain one that has like more of a cure time, it's going to sink down lower, um, especially with the, was that titanium oxide? I think is the, the actual solution. Yeah, I think I use the clicker here epoxy as opposed to this. I've never used this before. Do you know what brand it was? Um, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. That's about all I could tell you. So the Let's Resin one, if you're going to do a deep pour uh, epoxy, just yeah, to kind of like have fun. Your resins are in a black bottle. Well, some of them, yeah. Is it like these right here? Yeah, there's some like that. I've had, but I had the UV and I had the regular, so I don't, I'm still learning. So yeah, that black container to the right, uh, it's completely blacked right. out, Roger. So Which one? I'm not, uh, yeah, top, top shelf. Okay. So the black no, one's next to the fuel. Really that's cool. actually UV epoxy. Over here? No, no, other side. Oh. oh. That stuff's yep. finicky too. It's cool because it cures right away, but it's finicky sometimes. We should actually show people mm -hmm. that one a little bit, I think. Yeah, the UV is real cool. Oh, so you, you were talking about deep pour, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm so, that too. Yeah, so tell us about deep pour, right? Because that's probably what we see sometimes, things that are, you know, yeah. so that's, suspended that's, in epoxy. Yeah, so you can have all kinds of suspended. And like a lot of times, like people will kind of gauge. I mean, you're doing a lot of testing to figure out, like, you know, I mean, everything has a molecular weight and, and, and that's where it settles down. So when we're doing, you know, tint, like I mean, she's going to do a beach steam, so we'll show people how to blow out cells. I prefer to use alumilite. Um, this is, I think, don't quote me, titanium oxide, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, of the colors that are out there, this is one of the heaviest. White is going to be the heaviest color you have, whereas black is the lightest. So when you're manipulating colors and stuff like that, you can blend things in a way that they're layered in different levels in a single pour. So that's the cool thing about colors. Um, and, and probably what you're doing a little bit on your floors and countertops and everything else that you guys are... You know, you figured out how mm -hmm. you get that depth, and and there's there's other things you can use too. So we're gonna I'm gonna show people how to do what's called Italian drip. Basically, you're just using alcohol and just dripping it. Yeah, it's just a fancy way. Can of we ask a question, Mr. Brand? Absolutely, shoot. So we don't know how much powder to put. Sure. In. How much? How do we know? Sure. 
Just go for little, it. A little pinch. Just give it a little pinch. See, we don't need a lot. A dab of juice. Start light and always go more, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So take your stick and I'll hold that. But let's hold it close yeah. there. You gonna try that? Oh, I'll put a little bit more on that one. Okay, a little bit more. Do you see? Should I let it set for a minute, though? Yeah, it's a little bit of bubbles out of there. Huh? A little bit of bubbles out of there. Well, once the yeah. epoxy is on the stick, you don't want to reintroduce that back into the, the pick. That makes a lot of sense. It's like blue. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's more like pink, though, dude. You want more red? I'm going to step around you here, Ron. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so can I have so just more red? Just rip it on. All right. Yeah, however you want to do it. Okay. So, there's a couple different techniques you can do. Um, you got to sure this here. Right. You can mix those pigments. This is actually a cool thing. So um, some people can do what's called a dirty pour. And if you have multiple different colors, you just pour them into one master, it'll actually just lay it out and it'll kind of create um, a natural flow. And it looks really cool. I might actually try that on whatever piece I'm going to do here so I can show people what a dirty pour looks like. We'll talk about Italian dripping. We'll do some cell work, which is cool. Um, that's all mixed and up. you can literally use anything to kind of manipulate the epoxy. You just kind of have to understand the timing of it. You're trying to draw things out. Including gravity. Right. Using it. gravity to manipulate. Okay, that's so pretty. Alright. 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 And are you, are you finding that uh, that you can, the medium that you can start to feel it set? Talk about like in the in the cup and on the canvas. So you know, I I glad I'm glad I don't know a lot of the, the science because I just go play by ear, right? Well, I play it by surface. Yeah, you know, um, and so. Uh, I'm just looking at the surface, and then so I'm building up a, a, a patina to draw on. So this, this is this is making my background. And if you have uh, if you watch our interview or seen Max's work, you know that that's uh, that's a necessary component to his work is. to can tell with that background building up from there because we because. I recognize it as Dr. Sketchy because you sat through a couple of different posings because you had to drop a background, background down. Yeah, and right? I was just, I, I wasn't looking at that figure to draw her, I was looking to capture her, her skin against all those different lights. Yeah. And then I took your drawing of it as the architecture to extract yeah, yeah. what was there. Yeah, yeah. That's the same thing here. Excuse us. Except my inspiration was this kid, and I should do a drawing, and I'm going to attempt to celebrate that. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> you got a heat gun here? Let's go down here, Ron. Kind of blending it out. I see blow torches, I see heat guns. There's a heat component to this whole thing, right? Yeah, so epoxy is exothermic in nature, uh, as far as having a water-based one anyway, for sure. So what that means is that it takes heat for it to react. So using a heat gun, that kind of opens it up, can expand, bubbles want to come out, and you can use that also to your advantage to blow things out and create Look different signs. Yeah. Those white cells? Yeah. So epoxy, and you know what? This this is a question that I've just never asked before. And 
Is it plastic? Is resin plastic? Like, at the very base of it, is it plastic? In, in essence, yeah, it's a polymer, so it does uh, change into a plastic. So you're, you're working with material that goes from liquid state to a solid state over time. Can you carve it and buff it? Like, if you were... Let's, you buff it. You could buff it, so like, I mean, if you took a Dremel to it and, you know, maybe a deep pour and change the shape of it, is there anything that... Oh, so we're going to go into the dirty pour. Just kind of show you what it looks like. I should have added a little bit more black. Dirty pour, give us a, give it to us again. What's the definition? Basically, it's just taking a, a couple different colors. Unfortunately, I used two that were very similar in nature. And you'll have like streaking and stuff that looks more natural in nature. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Kind of just feather it down a little bit. What's the set time on this epoxy? What's that? What's the set time? Sweet. You're doing it over the plastic? That's pretty sick. I just figured, you know, experiment a little bit yeah. and see what happens. Uh, like, this one's around like 15, 20 minutes. So from the time you mix it to the time it starts to set on your surface or in the cup. Mm -hmm. It's about 15 minutes. Yeah. You gotta work pretty fast, but that's... Oh yeah, I mean, that's why it's a meditation, right? Uh, don't mind me. How are you guys doing over here? Fantastic. Yeah. 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 Dirty pour. Alright, next we go into the Some of you recognize Siobhan from, we've been friends, known each other for 20 years. 20 years. Yes, sir. That's Can you believe to that? Believe. That's crazy, That is right? crazy to believe. Yes. And I, I think I've seen that you, this is not your first epoxy class. No. You've done it a few times, it huh? It is. I wanted yeah. to give it a shot before I left the kid at it. <laughs> <laughs> See what it was all about. She's much more talented than me. Well, what, what, what I'm going to do. What? I know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm interested in. <laughs> oh, can we grab that yellow blood torch guy? What I'm interested uh, like, in. Well, what What's the importance of exposing your kids yeah. to creative you know, experiences? I I felt really bad because in the Where's beginning of her life, I'm a music person. Out of there. Music oh. is my life. Yeah. And um, I, I wanted her to do music. Yeah, but as she got older, season. she's like, I want to do art. And at that point, I had never been exposed to things when I was little, and I wanted to give her every opportunity to do what is creative in her mind. And at this point, like her teachers, her art teachers are emailing me that I need to get her more involved in art. And that speaks volumes for an eight year old. Yeah, yeah. So exposure is how they learn, right? I love it. Yep. And not only uh, was it a clay with Andy, but now it's epoxy. Yep. With uh, Brandon. Yep, and we started classes at the Beck Center, and um, this is just the beginning for her. Yeah, I love it. A good choice of color, too. She's amazing. I'm telling you. Oh my goodness, she's a natural. You're doing the damn thing. <laughs> Just running around with cameras. So I see some just adding to the canvas, right? That's what I'm trying to do, yeah. I'm kind of just building it a little bit. Layer by to layer. give it a topography. Yeah, trying. Don't fill too much, remember? We'll see. We'll see what we're doing here. Yeah, it turns out. I like how it looks like a little sun in there. So did you want to do uh, waves to that? Yeah, I did want to learn that for sure. Okay. Um, I would add, so this is actually like the ocean blue dye. Okay. Of course my sponsor's calling me right now. Tom, I'm not answering. <laughs> actually, we're going to answer. Hi, Tom. Hey, Tom. Everybody at the epoxy class says, well, you're on the air right now with Roger Miller at Tuesday at 7, but it's Hi, 8. Tom. <laughs> it's good, man. Just so you know, I have you on speakerphone, so you're on Facebook forever. 
<laughs> so this is my sponsor. Uh, Tom is an awesome guy as far as like helping me through the program and stuff like that and you know working through steps. Yeah, Tom, do you got any advice for fantastic. the the person that's still suffering out there today? Uh, yeah, ask for help. Yeah. <laughs> ask for help? Yeah, ask for help. Solid advice. Uh, I mean, you don't ask, you're not going to get it. Closed mouths don't get fed. Yeah. You know? It's profound yeah, in a simplistic way. Yeah. Ask for help. Yep. And, it, and that was the thing. So, Tom, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to talk about our story real quick, if you don't mind. Oh, wait, hold on. I, and I said, here's a bunch of money, make me cool shit. And now he's teaching you guys how to do it. So it's, it's a cool story. I'm, I'm going to tell them that one in detail, man. I appreciate you and everything you've done for me. Um, I love you too, man. I'm going to talk to you soon. All right, all right, bye. All right. So that's, that was my sponsor, Tom Odick. Um, I, I was going, I was kind of drifting through the program for a hot minute, not like really talking to the sponsor I had and like not doing the step work and stuff like that, as we all do on the fourth step, uh, just neglecting that. But uh, when I noticed that I was kind of still in the mix of like my alcoholic addict thinking, uh, I was finding that there was people in my life that I shouldn't necessarily have there. You know, it just wasn't conducive to my mental health, spiritual health, and physical and everything and so on and so forth. Um, so working with Tom, he kind of like helped guide me and anytime I had issues, I had someone to go to. That's not a form of weakness. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Ask me for help is not a form of weakness, period. I thought I could do it on my own. I was out there on the streets for, you know, 15 plus years. I've lost relationships, uh, family members I didn't talk to. Luckily, my current family, you know, my dad and everything, I, I have a great relationship. He's my best friend now. Um, Joanne, my sister, my uncle, everybody. Um, but I didn't have those things, you know, uh, when I first started out. I would show up. Ron here doing the thing. Trying to burn it up. Blue Torch should give some uh, char that knocks out the air bubbles, I would imagine, if there are any on there. Or? Yeah, yeah, so it's getting the air bubbles out, but also when you're torching the wood like that, it's a, I think it's a Japanese one. Don't quote me, I'm trying to be PC. It's called Shoshugimon. Uh, and you can actually coat epoxy on top of that to preserve that, that burn etched grain, you know, forever, essentially. And it just looks really cool. Like, who doesn't like burn that stuff? Yeah. Are you gonna coat that with epoxy? Not the outside. Okay. But I was like, hoping that it would do exactly that, where it looks kind of like just had blood kind of it's weird. That, those red cells look amazing. That's what I'm saying. I was very happy with the way that turned yeah, out. Yeah, I would not mess with it. So meeting Tom uh, changed my life. Like it really helped me out a lot. And like learning, uh, you know, to have better camaraderie in the program, getting active, uh, listening to somebody else other than being stuck in my own head. That's that's important stuff, man. That's a lot of things that like. You know, us addicts, like, we kind of neglect. We're all like, oh, yeah, I can do this on my own. I'm going to be a stubborn ass. And, like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. There's a beautiful life waiting for you out here. We're waiting for you out here. You know, kind of have fun. Enjoy life. There is a lot of fun to be had in sobriety. If anybody watches my page, you'll see that. I'm doing movies. I got an awesome relationship with a phenomenal girl named Sabrina. Uh, the people that I hang out with are quality people, and they're sober people. We have a great time, you know, doing classes, movies. Working at Nightmare Cleveland, you know, and meeting all those awesome people, yeah. Justin Davis and oh my God. everybody else right there, there, Brian Rick, and John. And like, you know, I got those things now. I, I have those relationships with people. Yeah. I didn't have that. And I had nothing before. Yeah. I was yeah. homeless out on the street for uh, too, way too long. So, How often does Tom, your sponsor, call you? What's, what's, what's I, that? I, I'm supposed to call him. Uh, it's supposed to be daily. I'm not the best at that. Uh, the, the, the character defect for sure, but I, I, I try to touch base with him at least you know a couple times a week. Uh, as as his sponsee, that's that's my role is to reach out and call. Hey, once in a while, if he doesn't hear from me, then he's gonna hit yeah, me. Yeah, he's gonna hit you. Yeah. And he's like, hey, here you go. He checks me. Love it. And that's and that, that, that's the sign of a good sponsor, right? Yeah, you that gotta have that. You know, the checks and balances and everything like that. Somebody who's gonna hold you accountable and not be like an enabler and, and all the other people. Like. Once you stop drinking and you stop doing drugs, like all those people that were in your life, they're not going to be there. And that's a good thing. You don't need those people. Anymore. 
Fill it with something better. Like, like epoxy. epoxy. I'm gonna come around so we can catch that and see what's going on over here. Lighten it up. Okay. And you look like you enjoy uh, blowtorch, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to burn the wood. <laughs> I did it. Uh, how much clear do you have? A lot, actually. Yeah? Okay. You need some of it? No, no, no. I was going to, um, we'll do... Oh, just, I mean, oh, just do it, right? I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever done this, so... It's called Cosmic Beach Waste. <laughs> I love how everybody... I yeah. I don't know. Beach waste and yeah. seashells. I'll right? tell you what, it looks great. And uh, when you get your hands, you know, wet, right? It Epoxy. Nice. I actually kind of enjoy doing it. Do. Usually I'm not hard to see the grass or not like that, but I actually enjoy doing it. Yeah. I'm not just saying that because we're together here. Yeah. I'm date night. Date yeah. night. Love it. <laughs> There's romance in the air at, there it uh, is. at, uh, at, at, at yeah. Epoxy Land. Epoxy Epoxy Yeah. Epoxy addiction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they are. I just don't know if I should put any more things in this, or that'd be too much, or what? Here. Dude, that looks cool as hell. It, it does look good. Cool. Do whatever so, huh? you want. Yeah. Don't overthink it. It looks good. It looks good. Don't put too much in yeah. now. I just don't want to overdo it and have it look like it's... Overdone, right? Like, okay. way too busy. <laughs> yeah. I, I've done that kind of stuff before, and then afterwards it, like, grows on you. Right. That's the cool thing about having those pieces. Cause like, and that was the thing, is, like, the problem is, like, I was like, oh, I should have tried this, right? Oh, I should have tried that. Yeah. So then I have to do another piece. Right. Let's say about. I know you got some of them little gold plate pieces. I'll say about throwing a couple. They're right here. They're right there. So here's here's the um the titanium oxide. I hope it's oxide. And we're just kind of mixing that around. I'm just putting a little bit in there. And like I said, the Luma Light is the yeah, best version awesome. of it so far. I tried mass. Yeah. Um, I wasn't a fan of it. The cells didn't come out right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, get up in there. Yeah, grab what you need. Get up in there. We're going to do that. Get what you need. Right. You need a heat gun. We just have clear. We got seashells over here. All right. We got rocks. Oh, that was a slick rick mode. I know. Decent. Shell. Okay. Let me get it. All right. So the trick. We're going to get rid of these bubbles first. So you're about six inches off the canvas. Yeah. Off the epoxy. You don't want to have it too close. Kind of take your time with it. You don't have to rush it. Now, what I like to recommend to people is you take a little bit of this clear first. You pour that where you want to go. I'm thinking like, I like what's going on right here. That's that's really no cool. More yeah, kind of I would kind of do like oh, clear little, right okay. before it hits the Just inside of that. Okay. Go around that edge. All right. Okay. Kind of like leave that mountainscape. I got that. So that clear is going to take it. It's going to push the material back a little bit. And we're going to take that white, like a thin line of it. Okay. And just drizzle it on there, and then I'm going to hold this at first at an angle, and we're going to kind of work that in. Okay. As you're working this in, you don't want to overheat. You keep hitting that same area because then the cells will form out. So you're just going to kind of keep going with that, and then pull back and kind of like move into the next area. You're kind of doing the motion like this. Okay, that's fantastic. And then one way you check the heat on it. Step Oh, maybe it got pulled. Try not. There it was. <laughs> so these are adjustable heat guns. I don't like it having a full blast. Yeah, that's like hair dryer heat. Yeah, very similar to that. Alright, so. Hey, Ron, can I borrow that torch real quick, too? Yeah. The other cool trick is that after you do this, you want to hit it with the blood torch real quick. And somehow that helps with creating the cells even more. So am I going to watch you do this? I want you to do it. <laughs> no way. I'll tell you what, while we, you'll do the clear, I'll do the white. Okay, so I'm Literally doing that skate. Just a nice little, like, thin amount. I would just kind of pinch that cup if you can. Oh, shit. You got this. There, great. Ship shape. You want me to pour it with the cup? No, no. So, I start on the outside of the canvas and I watch to see where the stream is at where I like it. 
Yes. I'm like, all right, cool. You have one. So then this? I'll yes. go across. Yes, no. Oh, she so wanted a thick layer. Okay. Something like I that. I always be skin man. Okay. That's fine. Right on. Do you want to try to do the way or do you want me to? No, no, no. I'll watch you. Okay. What do you need? So this one I'm going to try to do a little bit thinner, but I'm going to try to lean in the midsection where I did that clear. What do you need? It's going to look at mine. Nice and thick. So I'm going to start this off. Okay. Then I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay. Picking up and just putting down there. Alright. Here, watch out. Power tools. This is getting mad. There you go. There you go. It's like I find a sweet spot, right? Yeah. The right well, heat and the right hump. The one thing that's going to be playing against us, I'm noticing this right now, is that the canvas is yeah. my favorite next to someone just real on it. It's going to look great. Yeah. Because it's going to block all the pretty things that you have. I don't care. It's still going to look cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is nice. I like it. Okay, let's have a little bit. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. You're hitting that over to get the bubbles out? No, so like that's yeah, actually gonna that's gonna create some of the cells. So you got a little bit forming here on this side, and there's actually a mixture right here that's forming with the blue and the white. I like it. Too. Yeah, so this is gonna start spreading out a little bit more. Like I said, the canvas is playing against this a little bit, so it's kind of pushing all the material in the white. We want it to stretch out a little bit more. So right now the white is wanting to like go down and move around and like stay in itself. I still like. So and it like maybe like. 10, 15 minutes, we'll check back on this and let you look real quick. Cool. Okay, cool. I'm going to do the right same on. thing to that one over there. Oh, so this is that dirty floor, right? Yeah. So I'm just kind of messing around right now. Yeah. Hopefully, it being a little bit of a flatter surface. Yeah, probably. Look at the south. So if you look at this here, and then if you go over here, it turns green. It's entirely different from a different angle. Okay. It sure is. Okay. <laughs> you gotta give him a or something cool. Yeah, hey, I don't think it'd be it. up in there right there yeah. that's super cool so yeah, so yeah the, the cells, cells are starting to pop yeah, out right popped up a little bit more so now we're going to go into the italian drip heavier with this i like to do uh gold or silver seem to be the best one some colors they don't it doesn't like to sell out as much but i actually think it ron to hop in with yeah. us too hey ron do you want to demonstrate the italian drip <laughs> On this? Yeah, All right, I'm gonna hit with the spray paint if you wanna hit it with the, the alcohol. Should I find it? I moved it down there because I was blow torching okay. and I didn't want to blow torch into the I mean that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Thank you for the safety lesson. What percentage of alcohol is this? It's uh seventy one? Yeah. Alright. Is it does it make a difference whether it's uh, a seventy or ninety? It, it or will 99? change. Yeah. So when we're doing like uh, you epoxy to floors, and drip it, or do you, you just drip it on your fingers if you want? I'll just fling it because it's like not really a whole. I'm thinking this is ninety one. I'll just probably hit the bottom of it real quick. So as soon as you, you hit it, where you want it to drip. 
probably gonna do it on the bottom. Let's see what happens when we hit the white too. Why you not do it on the bottom? Or yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. Here, Raj. Yep. Oh, it's not dripping. Ah. Oh, we should do it this way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was like not doing that on my hand. This is the Italian drip, right? Yep. Like water and oil. That's sweet, though. So even though we were trying to focus the, the spray paint on this lower portion, the light misting that was going on there totally caught the rest of it. Oh, yeah. Spray paint, and then the 91% alcohol. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the better one. Display table. Miss mm -hmm. Autumn, how are you doing, girl? I love having you come here. Huh? Good. You, Lucy's doing good. It's done. Yes. Nice. You're happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's important to know when to step back. Yes. I've done that. Enough. Yeah. Important to know when to step back. Wow. Um, what do you got in here? You got all kinds of. Yeah. Where's my? I see some uh, what I would call complementary colors. You got some purples and some yellows and well, yellows. For the sun, and then it's like for some sand and some other like that type of sand over yeah. And then like that for like. There's so you know, many. Like, three layers going on. The sun is setting down. Love it. The sun is setting down. Yeah. Dude, you thought about that? Like going down. You are a beautiful-minded like, child. Up. You're the coolest ever. Well, we are going to do one more lap here, and then I'm going to shut down the live, but I'm going to catch some video at the end to share with the finished pieces, too. Sweet. Yeah, if anybody uh, is interested in Go taking this class, like I said, we have literally hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of material that you can learn from. You don't have to make the same mistakes that I did and lose <laughs> hundreds of dollars. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot to be had from just hands-on experience, you have someone guide you, you have questions and stuff like that. Uh, usually I'm explaining a lot more during a class and stuff like that, but we're doing a live once, this is a lot of fun. Thank you, Roger, so much for this opportunity. Uh, everybody coming today, um, future classes will be online, uh, Instagram, Brandon GL Arts, uh, Facebook, always posting on there, so if you're interested, let us know. First time of class is $75, second class after that, anytime $65. The only thing is required of you is to have a burning desire to create and also to teach other people. If you're around, like Ron has picked up a number of times and helped me out like immensely as far as like bringing people to class, teaching people, inventing new ideas and concepts that get my brain going. So I really appreciate him and everybody here today. Roger, thank you so much once again for this opportunity. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for letting us bust you. in. Highly recommended. Yeah. Good time. Thank you all. Thank all right, we'll see you guys next week. Boop, boop.